Jerry, you're back. And yes. with the heat, we talked about the dry conditions mm -hmm. a few weeks back. Now it's dry and hot. What can we right. do to protect? Well, the best thing with the, the watering, make sure you water early morning. That's always the best. Try to keep the water off the leaves because most water is really cool, 57 degrees underground. Now, when you first turn your hose on, put your hand because it can be really hot. It can actually damage your plant. So be careful, feel the, and take your hose to the water that way, feel it, make sure it's okay. Now, if you do see something wilting later in the day, go ahead and water, but try to keep the water off the leaves because cold water on the hot leaves will sometimes damage them, turn them yellow. Yeah, I've, I've seen that before too, the yes. damage to the leaves. Right. And is that more likely if you water in the heart of the day then? Yeah, it is because the, the leaves are hot too and the water is cold. Okay. That's usually that, that problem too. Now, insects are really a big problem now. Yeah. There's something called a white fly. It's a little white fly that flies around. There's aphids. There's different things like that. Trev, there are plenty of sprays you can use. The same thing with that. Do not spray when it's above 80 degrees. So get up early in the morning, spray then, or spray after dark at night, because the insects come out at dark. When you spray, try to spray on the leaves as well as the soil, because that's where a lot of times the eggs are in the soil. So spray on the soil too when you spray. Yeah, one thing to consider yeah. too in the heart of the day, uh, evaporation if you're right. watering too. So it's just not quite yeah. as effective. And I got one of my water bills lately. I have sod to keep yes. wet. It's not cheap. No, so, it isn't. Yeah, no, maximize no. your potential. Now, if you have any plants that aren't making it right now, mm -hmm. we do have a half price sale up at our North Grand Mall location in Ames and the main location, Holbs and Ames. This half price on all the plants we have. Like you can see across the front here, I have a real pretty perennial right here in the middle. We have perennials, we have annuals, we have herbs, we have vegetable plants you can still plant too. Yeah, and uh, be some beautiful yes. options too. And this one here, when I do a close up, it's really cool. It's called a shrimp plant. You can see the blooms on it. It's like a little shrimp tail it's on perfect. it. It's perfect. It's really cool too. Now this one needs a little bit of shade. You can do some sun, some shade on it. We have plants that can do sun or shade. This one here is one of my favorites because it's a forgiving plant. If you don't water it a day or two, it comes back. It's called yeah. a fan flower. The little blooms look like a little fan. Mm -hmm. These are in baskets and we have them in pots too. So if you have something that's not doing good, you have to come see us. What this, do you have that does the best color right now? Usually petunias. Yeah. That's my And marigolds. Mm -hmm. And marigolds repel insects also. Oh, and you that's, can go that's with, handy the time Yes, here, right? right. And we have something called a mosquito plant. It's a drain that smells like citronella. We have lemongrass, which sure. you can grind that up and eat it, or you can use it to repel insects. So we have several different things like that up at our greenhouse that way. And at, later in the segment, you'll see my phone number. Give me a call. I've had over 20 phone calls this week of people with different insect problems and blight on tomatoes. We'll do one more thing real quick. Blight on tomatoes. That's when the bottom leaves start turning brown or yellow on them. There's a blight that comes up out of the soil. That way you can use a fungicide, but you want to remove those leaves if you can. But if you touch one plant to another, you can transfer the blight. So be real careful okay. when you take those bad leaves off of a tomato. Now your tomatoes will still produce tomatoes, it's just a few less if they get a heavy blight. Okay. Jerry, so much. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for right. joining sure. us and uh, all the insightful tips that you so often oh, yes. bring.